everybody out there. My name is Chris Nicholson. I am a honky tonk pianist and a keyboard collector. I collect keyboards, I collect pianos, and a lot of people have been asking me why would I buy both the PA700 and the PA1000. These two chords right over here, they are powerful, powerful workstations. Um, basically, the bigger brother is the PA4X. And the reason that I bought both of them is because I needed one for my job and I needed one for home. So I decided that the PA700 would go to my job and the PA1000 will stay here at home. Now, this is a Sweetwater Sound catalog, um, and also there's a comparison of the PA4X, the PA700, and the PA1000. And they do all have a lot of similarities. As you can see on the PA4X, you see the sliders. Um, it doesn't have speakers. Uh, basically, the joystick area, I think it lights up if I'm correct. Uh, this is the 61 key model. You also have the 76 key model. And you can see in the price differences of all of them. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the PA1000 correctly, which I moved it just a little bit, but the PA700 is only $1,200. Plus the PA700 comes in an Oriental uh, version. So you can have the PA700 or the PA700 OR, which is actually $1,400. So $1,200, uh, or as I say, $1,300 goes for the PA700. $1,500 for the OR version. And if you look at the 1000, um, the PA 1000 goes for $2,000. And then if you look over at the, um, the PA 4X, now the PA 4X comes in four different versions. You can see it comes in a regular 61 key version, which you see in the picture right there. And it is $3,900. Hopefully these dealers could give you a break on them. The, um, the, they have the 76 key version, which is $4,099. Uh, you have the 61 key version ORT, which is the Oriental, um, and that is $4,099. The same price that you could get the, the 76 key version. And also then you have the uh, the PA four X seventy six O R T Oriental version, which is four thousand three hundred dollars, and if you go online, you can see all the specs and all the different um, features that it has. Now, opening up the box of both core keyboards, uh, the box basically on the outside looks very similar. I should have did a unveiling of the box opening up both keyboards. Um, I still have the boxes actually. So, um, of course, you can um, pull out the music rack, the power cord, and also here is the manuals. They're both quick guides. Now, the reason of quick guides, it shows you, like, basically uh, a quick step of what you want done on the keyboard. On the left-hand side, you've got the, PS, the PA700 and the PA700OR, which is the Oriental. And on the right-hand side, you got the PA1000. And you can see that the Korg logo is in big form on the PA1000. Now, what I suggest is if you go on YouTube and type in PA series, it could be uh, the 700 or the PA1000 video manual. They'll show you step-by-step -step process of how to work your Korg keyboard. Well, a lot of people ask me, why didn't I just buy two PA1000s and just call it even, or two PA700s and do the same thing. Well, I wanted to explore the both of the differences. Number one is that if I were to create something on the PA700, I wanted to make it also compatible with the PA1000. So say for instance, if I was gonna share it to other users online, um, if I did something on the PA1000, it might not be compatible with the PA700. So I thought about just starting with the PA700 as in, doing creativity first, then edit it on the PA-1000. Now, uh, another reason that I thought would be kind of cool was that the PA-700 has a black casing uh, all the way around, and it has a maroon uh, dashboard. The PA-1000 has a maroon casing 
with um, with basically silver inlay on the sides, and it has a black dashboard. I was thinking about interchanging those parts, but I might not do that. Um, the PA-1000, of course, is more powerful, has more instruments, more rhythms, more sounds, more features uh, than the PA-700. But I thought if I just basically create on the PA-700 uh, at work and then edit everything on the PA-1000, I can make both of them compatible for like uh, online users. If they wanted to use some of my work, they can on both instruments. Okay, so before I play the sounds on both of these keyboards, which I'm actually going to do in another video, not this video, I wanted to talk about the, um, the cosmetics on the PA-700 first. As you can see, it has a black casing, which is very, very beautiful, very sleek, and it also has a maroon dashboard. With the maroon dashboard on here, you have a TFT um, display, which is actually shared on the PA4X, its bigger brother. Uh, the buttons right here, they're actually um, rubber coated, which is really cool. They're rubber buttons and they don't leave fingerprints. This instrument is very, very easy to clean. Um, you can see the speakers right over here. The speakers actually has an extra cone and they're white. The, um, the control panel right over here, which is, uh, it has a three assignable switch and the joystick are actually identical to the PA-1000 and the PA-4X. The action on this keyboard is a little bit lighter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pan the camera down so you can actually see the bottom of the action. The bottom of the action, there's nothing there. It's, it's just regular plastic. But it's so cool because um, the action on the PA700 um, is a lot better than the Yamaha PSR series keyboards. Um, so the speaker resolution on here, you have a 25 watt speakers on here. The sounds, you actually have 1,700 sounds and also you have 370 rhythms plus another 128 user rooms that you can make yourself. Both the PA700 and the 1000 can upload sound fonts and samples and you can edit them the way how you want them. Okay, so what I did is I basically switched things around a little bit. I put the PA-1000 in front so I can show you more features on it. Now, just looking at it, you can see that it has a maroon casing. It's basically the same casing as the PA-700, but it's maroon. And you have the silver sightings, which is really cool, which they added. Um, another thing that you might look at is that the speakers. The speakers in here, very, very high definition speakers that you have on here. Um, this is actually a 32 watt speaker. Um, you also have the woofer and also you have the tweeter. And you have the sub uh, ports on the back on both models, actually. The uh, dashboard on here is black and it's like a black matte finish. But the buttons are a high polished ebony plastic. It's not rubber, just like the PA700. Uh, you have the TFT uh, screen over here, which actually adjusts just like the PA4X. Three different positions, plus also you have a USB port on the top. Uh, you have the direct access to styles, whatever category that you want, fast access. Also over here, you have the two dual player mode sequencers. Uh, not actually that you can sequence both of them at the same time to make 32 tracks, which a lot of people might think it's only 16 tracks you can serve, but you can play one song and then cue in another song while the other song is playing and then switch just like on a DJ. Um, so as you can see the maroon casing over here, which is really neat, you also have the same control panels, which over here, the assignables, and also the joystick. And the action 
is different. It's a different feel on the action on here. It's all 61 keys, just like the PA700. But as I pan down, you can see there's weights on the action. So it's a little bit weighted and it feels a lot better. One thing that the PA1000 has that is really cool is the TC Helicon. Uh, this is basically their own company, but they have partners with Korg uh, to make you have the best vocal harmonizing and effect samplings in your vocals or guitar, which is really cool. Um, the PA-1000 basically has 1,750 instruments and 430 rhythms plus 128 user rhythms. You can also sample on here. Um, the sample quality is much better than the PA700. Uh, both of them share the same EDS. I think I said it right, but um, at the same time, I'm looking at my notes right here. It seems sh shares the same sound source right here, which is the, yeah. The EDS-X, which is basically um, Enhanced Definition Synthesis Expanded. So that's the same thing that's on the PA-4X. If you have a PA-600 or a PA-900, um, it's not expanded. So all the sounds that you're getting from the PA-4X is mostly on both of these units and one thing about the PA4X that you're missing is the sliders and the PA4X does not have speakers and it has a little bit more sounds and more rhythms plus they came up with the upgrade called the PA4X Next okay so now I have put them both on top of each other basically the PA700 on top of the PA1000 I wanted to compare the back as you can see very very low they both have the same power connection which is basically the three prong um, computer connection cable and also you see the base boosters on both sides of them and you could tell from the PA1000 and the PA700 which casing it is because the PA700 is black and the PA1000 is maroon now let's go to the back connections right over here they're both the same but they look like they're laid out a little bit differently so, as you can see, both of them have the, uh, the guitar mic gain in. You have the audio inputs, which is the right and left. You have the audio outputs, which is the right and left. You have the MIDI in and out. Also, you have the pedal connections, which is the assign and damper. Now, over here, it looks different because, as you can see on the PA700, the uh, USB to host and device is next to each other. On the PA1000, they're kind of away from each other. And over here you have both video outs, which you can connect to a TV, computer, or monitor. And everybody wants to know what that little compartment that says, read the user manual before opening. That you can actually put an SD, a mini SD card inside of it. Um, on the PA1000, I have a 64 gig. So actually when I'm going to Target uh, to my job, near my job, um, I'm gonna take the PA700 with me and it's gonna have the same for sound fun and sample memory. Okay, a lot of people's gonna ask me, how does the PA700 start up? So here it goes, I'm gonna press it. Of course it has a regular Korg logo. Now that little glitch that you just saw blinking, that's normal. That's on basically almost any Korg PA series. As you can see, it says Professional Ranger and it starts up very, very quickly. Uh, because I don't have any samples loaded into it. Um, it'll do that again without the bar and it'll have the versions. The current versions is 1.4.0, which is January 23rd, 2019. And that's exactly how it starts up. Now shutting down the both cords actually, they both shut down the same. You hold down the power button, the screen goes dim, and then shuts off. Now we're at its bigger brother, which is the PA1000. 
So here I go. I'm going to turn it on. You get the same Horde logo. You get that same, like, eye blink. A little glitch. It's not anything wrong. It's that it's, it's normal. It does that. Even the PA600 does that. Now you can see the background of it. The background is actually the same as the PA4X, which is the bigger brother of the top line model. Uh, you have that speaker grill background with the logo that says PA1000 on it, which is really cool. Um, you have the new versions, which is OS versions 1.3.1, which is established January 23rd, 2019. So that's this year, which is really good, still current. Um, it takes a little bit longer for the PA1000 to load up because it has more samples um, that actually it comes with. A lot of people, as I said, with the PA700 and the PA600, which I experimented, um, even the Havion 30, if you were to delete all the original stuff on here, turn it back on and try to play the demo, some stuff will not work right because there's actually samples um, that they actually put in and they put in other programs in the user section that um, will actually work with those um, with the demos that are on there. So some of the demos might not play right if you delete that. As you can see, the screen is all lit up. It's kind of almost the same as the PA700 and the PA4X, but they all have different similarities and also at the same time they have, um, they have their own comparisons of what they have. Now turning back off the PA1000, the screen goes dim and then it shuts off. As I turn on the PA1000, it will still act normal as the screen has risen. It has three positions that the screen actually can raise up and as restarting it again, you'll see something that's a little bit different from the PA700 and which they did not even add in the PA900 or the 600. And I don't think they even added it in the PA4X. So as the versions is loading up, when the whole machine, all the lights actually gleam and load up, you will actually see the knobs light up at the same time. Now it takes a little longer, as I said again, for the PA-1000, but it presents itself really nicely, um, especially on stage if you cannot find your knobs and you're in a dark stage. Another feature that I found out with the PA-1000, I don't know if it's on the PA-700, but you can adjust the brightness of your buttons you know, the bright and dimness of your buttons and everything. So as it turns on, you can see that the lights turn on. Of course, the buttons are backlit and also the knobs are backlit too. So if I were to take off one knob, you can actually see that it's actually backlit. And that's with all the knobs here. That's not on the PA700. But this is just a cool added feature that you can actually see the knobs and see what positions they are. They can easily be removed and easily be put right back on. And now I'm gonna basically load up both of them at the same time just to see how fast one and the other one loads up. So just to show you, pressing both of the buttons at the same time, They both respond nicely. And of course, the load of bars are loading. Seems like, of course, the PA700 is taking a little bit faster than the um, PA1000. Now, a lot of people don't realize these are not only keyboards, but they're workstations and they're also computers. So if you compose something on both of these keyboards, you actually don't need a computer to do it. Uh, the sequencer is very, very easy. The rhythm sequencer is very easy. The PA700 is all lo already loaded up. 
Uh, the PA-1000 is taking a little bit more time because as I said, it's more of an upgraded model uh, plus more samples. And um, so you can actually load up both of them. But one thing about it is that this one takes just a little bit, little bit more time loading up. One thing I realized about the screen is that um, it is very, very easy to clean. Uh, a lot of LCD touchscreens are not easy to clean. Sometimes they flake off and everything. This one doesn't flake off. This one, if you use the right chemicals, basically, uh, I use either rubbing alcohol or just plain water. Water can get do the job. The PA-1000 is fully, fully loaded up. And now, let's hear the difference between both of them as in the demos. Okay, so let's compare demos on both of them. So let's start with the PA-700. All I have to do is just press the style play and the song play button at the same time. And here's the demo. PA 700. That's powerful itself. Um, as I was listening to the demos, I was watching the speakers how they perform um, when they're full blast. And I tell you this, um, it's it's definitely powerful. I'm looking at both of the speakers itself, and I see that this one actually has a tweeter. This one has something different than a tweeter. Um, but it must be another sound booster the way how it comes out. Um, this speaker is a lot smaller than this speaker. So here's a demo of the PA-1000. All I have to do is just push the same thing.
got goosebumps just listening to the power of these instruments. Um, and I tell you this, I was watching the speakers itself, and that is a tweeter right over here. Um, this one is, I don't think it is a tweeter. So it actually has the, um, it has a woofer. It's actually a two range, I can see it's a two range. So it has a woofer and probably a tweeter in the middle, but that must be another sound booster right over here. This one actually has a full size woofer, which is the red, and also it has the tweeter. Um, and I tell you this, this, this um, when it was a full blast, it didn't even bounce or flinch that much. So this is a very powerful machine. Both of them are powerful machines. And I tell you this, um, I do love the PA-1000. Um, but I tell you this, I'm so glad I have both of them. Well, everybody, that concludes my video. And I will do a sound test on both of these instruments in another video. Um, later on after I just explore both of these instruments a little bit more this as I said the PA 700 this is gonna be at my um, at my job because it's gonna be taking keyboards back and forth and back and forth and back and forth um, I can actually leave this at my job and this one over here the PA 1000 I'm gonna just leave it at my house because this is the more upgraded model I can do more stuff with it um, so whatever I do on a PA 700, I can actually just jump right with it and then add it on But thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. Please click like, subscribe, follow me on everything. If you're watching on my YouTube, go to my Facebook, try to join me as a friend, or my friends page, uh, which I actually have a Facebook friends, friends page, actually, too, and a Facebook fan page. If you're on my Facebook, go to my YouTube channel and subscribe, click like, and also uh, write your comments and follow me on everything. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a nice day.